This is my 48 Packard. We rented it to a movie company. They wrecked it. They dropped it off without telling me. Then they said, oh, it's not their fault. The brakes went. No, it's not a power brake car. They had some kid in there who plowed into a van with it. I mean, it's not my fault. I got Robin on it. She'll get us paid. But meanwhile, the car is sitting here like this. I need to fix it. It earns money when it's fixed. It, may, it does rentals. Plus, I can sell it. I need the car up and running. David. Yes, sir. You know the Packard that got clobbered by the movie company? Yeah. What do we need to fix it? Gonna need a front clip for that car. I think I know where one is. Well, that'd be good. Yeah. It's a little bit weathered. If I get it, how long would it take you to put it back together? Probably like two weeks. That long? Well, gotta straighten it, sand it, paint it. A week, maybe. All right, 10 days. <laughs> All right, we'll negotiate that. I'll talk to you. All right. I got a phone in my car and I'm on the run. I know what it takes to be number one. And I'll be riding high when the day is done. I'm just out here having fun. I've been buying, selling, and trading classic cars for 40 years. I work here with my beautiful wife, Robin. We make a great team. Some people call it work, but for us, it's a whole lot more. I'm Ted Vernon, and this is my place, South Beach Classics. Yeah. What do you mean you have an answer for me? This has been my, uh, my 50th phone call in the past three months. No, the brakes were perfectly fine. I have affidavits from all of the staff at the production company in which drove the vehicle on the truck, drove it off the truck, affidavits from the trucking company. Well, the insurance uh, tried to give me the runaround by saying it was my fault that the car brakes failed. And that car was driving every day and it had no issues. And uh, I mean, someone probably slammed it to the floor and it didn't stop like a new car does. So it, it took a hit, a big one. James, it's simple math here. Okay, I've been without the car for six months. It could have grossed an additional $6,000. I'm at 17 and you're at 13. Let's come up, let's, let, let's put this to rest. Okay, 16.5. I'll come your way a little bit. Okay, that works. Don't get Robin irritated. So she get us paid. Quick. Steve. Yeah. I'm going up to Vantage to look at a Bentley for myself. Wanna go? Nice. Come on. Yeah. I want your opinion. Absolutely. A, a nice white Azure. The car's got 7,000 miles. Right. It's supposed to be new. Uh -huh. Knowing Richie's cars, this probably is new. Of course. Let's get a look at it and see what we can do. You never know what you find in that place. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. A nice old car, isn't it? I love the big Cadillacs. If I'm not driving a Rolls or a Bentley, I'm driving an old Caddy. First Rolls I ever bought, the oldest one, was a 1933 Rolls. And I drove that a lot. It's a Park Ward, 2025 model. I drove that all over the place. I mean, I used to go to New York. I used to buy Bentleys in the newspaper for $3,500 and drive them back to Florida. S1s, S2s, left-hand drive cars, 3,500 bucks. And you could do that all day long. Back in the day, I used to buy Silver Cloud Rolls for 3,500 bucks. The cars I got then were a little rough, but there were still Rolls and Bentleys. Whoa, Ted, what is that? Look at that. Oh, God. Look at that, Silver Cloud. It was. My God, Silver Cloud. It's rougher this... than three nights in jail, bro. Oh, man, this is beautiful. You know how much money I can make with this? Can you know those fenders are worth like 3000 bucks a piece, even used? 3000 a piece, so much more. Well, to I be think made if they're here. out here, I can rob them. Yeah? Why don't you? I don't think he's, I mean, Richard's probably done with them. I say, I say, if you can buy them, buy them. Absolutely. I can buy them. I'm sure this is I nice. can buy them. I'm probably the only guy that would buy them. <laughs> Hey, Richie. Hi, Ted. How are you? How are you feeling, man? Good to see you. How are you? Okay, so show me my Bentley. Then you want to sell me. Okay. When you come to Vantage, you can expect to see the best of the best. So tell me about this car. This is a 7,700-mile car. It's been in the hands of a very meticulous collector. 
Uh, if you washed it, you would make it wet, but you wouldn't make it any cleaner. You want to know the truth? Yes, I do. Are you I, from you? I will know the truth. Yes, you will. <laughs> and I don't want to waste your time. I, I I can't do white because my top is down all the time. And it's fine. Can't do. I love it. I cannot do white. That fine. won't last six months with me. It you know that. It won't last six days. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> As I suspected. Ted was distressed with the white interior because of the lack of durability. It's like baby shoes, it gets dirty looking at it. As we were pulling in, I saw you had about six corpses yes. off to the side. Right. Uh, what's the story on those? The story on those is I believe those certain kinds of Rolls Royces are worth more dead than alive. They're not worth restoring, they're worth more in parts. I don't know why you would like to have them, but you're welcome to them. Steve, first of all, will find something to do with them. Oh, there's plenty to do with them yeah. <laughs> if you want to do something. <laughs> but with, yeah, I'd like to have them. OK, they're yours. Aw, thank you. Thank you. That's typical Richard. I got the better deal today. I came here. I got to look around. I got six free Rolls Royces. <laughs> Not so bad. And uh, you know, and, and they'll be sold right away. So I'm happy. I did something. There's a tow truck running around here, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it, and I'm going to find out exactly what it's doing here. I need the headliner done. I need the two kick panels done. I need the upholstery. I've noticed this white tow there. truck sneaking around the lot for a while now. The first time I noticed a tow truck was when I was out front working with my interior guy. The truck rode right up on the lot, no wave, no nothing. This new place is so big, I don't know who's coming or going. Ted really doesn't need to know about the tow truck because I really truly need to get things done around here. And this is the only way to do it. The second time I see this tow truck, I'm on the phone and I look up and there it is again. I need to take these two Rolls Royce bumpers and put them in a the storage locker over there. The third time I see a truck, it's on my lot like it owns the joint. Tow trucks in Miami usually mean trouble. There's no telling with Ted how he's going to feel when he finds out about the fact that I own the tow truck and he has no clue. I think he'll be pretty livid, but you know what? At the end of the day, I know I did what's right. I need to get this car back up and running. This car earns money. It does film work, video work all the time. I need it fixed. Well, I need to fix the front end on it. The bumper is damaged, the hood, the fenders, the grill, the framework in the front all needs to be repaired. I've been looking all over the country. There's one in California, there's one here. But this kid that works for me, Marcus, has one. But it's from his family, and they don't know if they want to sell it, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to lean on him. I need the car. You still need that Packard? Yeah, I need it bad. They smashed the one I got here. I need the front cap of the car. No, I'll talk to my mom, see if she's still interested in selling it. Your mom is too tough, she won't sell it. I've been trying a year and a half. I'll deal with you. You know I need it on a personal level, bro. I got the smashed car. When do you want to go take a look at it? All right, let's go see it in the morning. Yeah, we'll do it in the morning. I don't like to do business with employees. I don't like to sell them anything or buy anything from them. I don't want them to be able to say I did something wrong. But I need the car. I'm going to try and get it. There's a young man named Felix coming by. He's got a big boat of a convertible, Plymouth. And uh, I think he said it was a 68 Fury. I like him. I have one right, right there. But um, he doesn't like it. He's had it a while, I think, and he's tired of it. So he wants to get something a little more smaller, a little more peppy. I brought my Plymouth, 68, 1968. Used to belong to my mom's neighbor. Um, the, her husband passed away, so I ended up buying it for a good deal. Um, but I'm tired of it. I, you know, I look at it every day. I want something new, and I want something faster. On the phone with the guy, he sounds like a serious, no-nonsense guy. I like guys like that. So that's it, huh? Hey, what's going on, man? How you doing? What's up, brother? How you doing? Nice to finally meet you, man. This is it. What do you think? I think, uh, I think it's a pretty car. I think so, too. I've had it for a while. Fury 3, brother, that's a good car. It is, I mean. Yeah, car, I mean, it's nice. I think it's a little too big for me, though. 
My wife said that first night I was with her. <laughs> the Plymouth is a uh, real nice 68 Fury 3. Uh, they were good cars, and they're more of a floater boater type of car, but not something that I'm worried about. I mean, I think that car does low to mid teens. I've had it for so long now, I just want something different. That's what happens. Now, you know, once you trade with me, you can trade again and again. Oh, really? If you get tired of the next one, bring, yeah, I always need cars and you become a family member. I have people coming back all the time to trade again and again and again, because it's fun to be able to change cars without spending a bunch of money and go to the next one and you know wear a different hat every day. It's cool. I like it. Yeah, you picked a, a victim already? Looks like you did. I love this car. Yeah, well, it's a GT350 clone. It's, oh, it's a clone, right. Of course. Right. It's not 60 grand. Right. Well, you know, I'm glad more. it's not 60 grand. <laughs> oh, wow. It's got 302. It's got AC. I mean, Mustang is an American classic, you know? I mean, who doesn't like a Mustang, especially an older one? I love this car. I don't want to tell you how much I love it. I'm going to tell you how much you love it. How's that? Oh, man. I'm thinking your car's worth 10, 12 grand. OK. And my car's worth 22 grand. And I want to earn some money. I had a price to 24. I want to earn some money. So I'm thinking like 12 grand would work for me. And that's being really fair. Uh, I am going to earn something at that. And I'm entitled to it. 12 grand is a lot, man. 13's you know? better. How about 13? I know. I'll tell you what. I came in with the intentions of not spending more than 5,000. So 12,000 is definitely. Let's look at something different. Well, no. I, tell, I mean, I'm willing to make a deal. I can change up a little bit. I'll tell you what I brought today, and then we'll take it from there. I brought $10,000. I have it in my pocket, cash money. I, cash money, you can take it. I'll take. Yes, it's, it sounds great. It it's, sounds better in my hands. It's but, 10. So I'll give it to you. You take it. I leave with the car. You keep the Plymouth. I don't want to see it anymore. Plus tax and transfer, done. You got to get me somewhere, right? Yep, <laughs> yep, I got to do it. He got a better car, he got a more sellable car. He got a car that fits him better. And uh, I told him 12 and he told me 10. And that's fair, really fair. So I'm good. And now he's got a Mustang. I know I got a good deal. I know I got a good deal. Um, I wanted to spend a little less, but I don't have to do anything to the car. The car is ready to go, AC works. So we're in Florida. I can just jump in, take a ride on South Beach, and we'll be good. Ted, these titles just came in. 2007 Ford truck. Robin, call me. We got a title to a 2007 Ford truck. We don't have one. It's made out to us. Call me. Ted might be livid when he finds out that he basically owns the tow truck. Yeah, Ted has the tow truck. I had to tell him he had it, but he had it. My wife bought a tow truck. Just what we needed. Now, in defense of her, She's moving a lot of cars around with it, so it's, it's got a purpose. I would not have done it. She did it. I'll keep my mouth shut. gentleman named Milan came in. He's a uh, got a body shop. I think he's a car dealer. He builds cars. He, he ha collects. And he says, I've got a bunch of cars that I'm looking to make a change. And he wants some Mopars and some race cars and hot cars. I'm good. I want to see what he's got. So he seemed like he was ready to do business. And I like that. Hey, Eli, how are you, man? Good morning. Nice Welcome. To your place. Finally. You got a lot of stuff. You got a lot of stuff. Where do we start? Uh, we can go outside. I saw those when I walked in. Do you have anything in the back to show me? Yes, I do. Let's go there first, because I saw that. I'm already excited. I always like to browse the entire lot when I'm trading with another dealer. You never know what you might find. Sometimes you can find a real gem in the back. Your most ready cars are the Hummer, the Corvette, and the Prowler. Are the most ready cars. Yes. And you want to come look at my stuff? Now? Yes. We can go look at I'm going to need to see your stuff. What I like. Ilan tells me that he bought his first car for me 12 years ago. And uh, honestly, I don't remember. I have a lot of people that come in my place and say, I bought a car for you. And it's hard after so many years of doing this to remember everybody and what car they bought. Hi, Ilan, how you doing, man? Good, how Let's try you? and make a deal. Let's do Let's something. Let's do it. Now, I want you to look, walk around, see what you like, and we go from there. 
Elon is looking for muscle cars. That's the demand he's got right now. And I have the cars he's looking for. I like that. The walk around went real well with Elon. I believe he's gonna do a deal. I don't know which way we're gonna construct it yet. I've gotta wait and see how realistic he is. We went through the cars. It's a little bit confusing. It's a lot of cars, a lot of inventory. It's a beautiful place. For now, I need the muscle cars because I have clients that are waiting for those cars. I don't think he's looking to hurt me and I'm not looking to hurt him. So hopefully this can be the beginning of a fruitful relationship. That's what I'm trying for. The three vets that we saw, the brown, okay. the white, and the silver. And the silver. Okay. The 25th anniversary. Right. These are the ones you settled on? Yes. Okay. What we can do against the Hummer? The Hummer is legitimately worth in the mid teens. What can we put in there that's fair? The three vets. Those are worth a whole lot more than the mid teens for the three of them. Especially the silver one. Silver one will bring me 14 by itself. I need to get with, out with three cars for the Hummer. Mm -hmm. Three cars, project, whatever. You want me to pick three cars for you for the Hummer? I'm not giving you three of those for the Hummer. Let's put it this way. The two Corvettes and the La Manche and a thousand dollars. You know where this is going, right? You know where this is going? What's gonna be 13 is gonna be 14, it's gonna be 16, it's gonna wind up 15. That's how it's gonna end if we wanna spend another 10 minutes, right? Done, 15. So you own both 80 Corvettes and you own the Le Mans and uh, I own a Hummer and you owe me 1500 bucks. Yes, sir. I'm happy. I'm happy too. That man was very tough, very, very tough. And uh, this deal's a little different than most. This deal was about building a relationship with a neighbor. So I let him win this one. I gave him three cars for one Hummer that I can go to the used car sale and buy. But now we're gonna do some real business. I'm fine, I think it's good smart business. And the nicest part of it is my son Teddy loves Hummers, so I'll pick him up in the Hummer tonight and we'll cruise for the weekend in it. We'll have fun. One of the fellows told me there's a guy eyeballing that Plymouth I just took in. I'm gonna hit him at 18.5 and see what happens. Hey guy, how you doing? Pretty good, and yourself? Ted Vernon. Orlando Cruz, how you doing? Hey, Orlando. Uh, I had this car a long time. About 20 minutes, 15 minutes. He bought it from the original owner. It's had upgraded gauges on it, and just a nice straight boat of a car. All right, so what are you asking for the car? I'm asking 18.5, and I think that's fair. I mean, I, I, I priced it because I just traded it. That's what I put it at. I mean, I don't have to touch the gas. Boom, every time. Very nice. Asking 18.5, huh? I'm asking 18.5, and I'd like to find her a home. How about I take her off your hands for 18? I think 18's fair. Uh, Got it. That's great. That is beautiful. I off the Mustang. I got my price because of the trade. I was in that car right, and instead of hitting him at 12 or 14, I hit him for 18.5, and he buys it for 18. Are you kidding? That's, a, that's, that's really good. That's a good day. I know Marcus since he's 10. I'm gonna put it on a personal level that I need him to sell it to me. I know he doesn't want to, but I need the car. And I think, you know, if I can buy the, 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 the corpse that he has for, you know, a grand or less, I'm winning. Cause it's gonna cost me to have to ship something in. I'm not concerned, you know, doing any deals with, with Ted. Trust him with everything, and, you know, I, we've known each other such a long time that it's, it's pretty much dealing with family, so. 48 Packard. So you said you want it. That's what I want. It's hideous. I mean, it's really horrible. Because I need this front cap. Yeah, but you got to buy the whole thing. I got you. It's what I need right here. OK, what do you think it's worth? I don't know. Uh, 500 bucks? That's what it's worth for the weight. I need more than that, come on. Uh, 1,000 bucks. Let's do the 500 like you said, because I've known you for a long time, and I get to keep my job. Ha, <laughs> good man, thank you. It's a win-win. I got my own tow truck. It doesn't cost you to bring it home. 
What would you do if you're walking down the street and your toe fell off? I have no idea. <laughs> you call a tow truck. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> you call a tow truck. Oh, oh, oh. Get it? <laughs> well, that was a win-win. I got the Packard for nothing, basically, for 500 bucks, which the rest of it'll sell for. And then I found out I have a tow truck, and that's 20, 30 grand. I'm glad I have that. And it comes in handy because we're using it. So, you know, and all in all, it ain't a bad day. And a uh, couple, three weeks, I'll have that Packard back in action where it starts making some money. So it's all good. But if anyone thinks this business is easy, they're nuts. Because it's really, really not easy. It's hard work. You better know what you're doing or you shouldn't be in this.